My nephew might be a product of SA, and possibly my husband's child. A legal advice post by OP that didn't gain much attention. I mean, if there's already someone on the birth certificate who signed the recognition of parentage, can another possible father be forced to take a paternity test? There's currently a situation in our family. Man a left the mother of his three-year-old child. Up until this point, they had been a family. He was an active father in the child's life. He signed the birth certificate and recognized parentage in our state. When they were trying for their child, they had trouble conceiving for a few years. On a drunken night, Man B Man A's brother was S a while passed out by Man A's girlfriend. Her thought process was that if it was his brother, he'd never know, and the child would look like his, not relevant. But this caused a huge rift, which ultimately Man A really could not forgive her for, and is the reason he left years later. His ex is now trying everything she can to cause issues, including last night when she said she wanted paternity tests from both men. She said if the child is Man B's, she'll be taking him to court. As far as I know, this is not legal because Mana has already accepted the role of father. But I just want to get some insight because this could really be a mess. Original. I know exactly where your mind goes when you read that title. But I promise this is a little different situation. I met my husband John around three years ago. Not too long after, when I was being introduced to the family, I met his brother's fiance Shelly. John brought me aside right after I initially met her and told me he had something to tell me. Shelly and her fiancé Mike John's brother had been trying to reconcile for a few years with no luck. So one drunken night at a party, my husband was passed out on the couch and woke up to Shelly, well, essaying him. Immediately, he got her off and told his brother. It was a huge SHT show. Her thought process was that if she could get pregnant with John, Mike would never know and think the baby was his. They decided not to report it and keep it amongst the family. Mike was dead set on leaving her, but guess who ended up pregnant shortly after? Shelly. So of course Mike wanted a baby more than anything, and decided to keep Shelly around for the sake of their little family. Shelly and Mike had been together since they were teenagers, and I could tell even from the first encounter that they had their fair share of relationship issues. At the end of the day though, they just wanted what was best for their child. The whole situation around Shelly made me uncomfortable honestly. I couldn't understand how she could just do that to John and expect everyone to just forgive her and forget. My mill pushed for forgiveness the most because she wanted her grandson and a happy family. Every event I went to with Shelly there, she always acted odd toward me. Eventually, she and Mike stopped making plans with us and ignored us for months on end. On a side note, my husband had a son who was just born when I met him. So I also have a stepson who is about the same age as Mike's son. Shelly has met him maybe five to eight times. We'll get back to that later. One night, we got a phone call from Mike. He said he couldn't take it anymore and he left Shelly. They were on the rocks for years, but he said he honestly just couldn't get over what she did to John. She took their child and left, and she was completely surprised Mike wanted to break up. At first, the breakup was okay. After a day or two, they agreed on a custody schedule and child support outside of court, and both signed an agreed-upon contract. I guess Shelly's friends got into her head and told her she deserved more. So Shelly retained a lawyer and now refuses to let Mike see his child at all until a custody order is in place. Mike is obviously completely broken over this. He is legally his child's father, but in our state, he has no custodial rights until after court. He doesn't know when he'll see his son again. We gave him our lawyer's information, and he's going for 50-50, but he hasn't heard back much since it's the holidays. Here's where it gets crazy. Shelly called Mike the other night and said she wanted paternity tests from both guys. If Mike isn't the biological father, she wants to come after John for child support etc. I honestly don't think she can legally, since Mike already has his ducks in a row, and has been his kid's dad since day one. Mike loves his son, regardless of his biology. John loves his nephew, but knows he is Mike's son, no matter the outcome. The only person who is going to be hurt by this is my nephew. The whole family already knows, there's a chance that my nephew is John's, but he's Mike's son. He looks incredibly closer to Mike than John anyway. On the other end of this fiasco my stepson. Shelly showed very little interest in my stepson, because she was preoccupied with her own son of the same age. She made it clear she wasn't a fan of his mom. My husband and bio mom dated for a mere two weeks. Shelly didn't really know her well either. Well, after the breakup, Shelly really has no ties to my stepson or our family anymore. I have no idea why, but she decided to bring my nephew over to my mom's house to see my stepson. She's been there at least three times a week. It creeps me out. He's not her nephew anymore, and they didn't have a relationship anyway. She stole the Christmas gifts that Mike had bought for him 
and brought them to his mom's. Bio mom played a lot of crazy games with John in the beginning of the custody arrangement, and I can see those same exact games starting to be played with Mike now. Anyway, I just had to get that all off my chest. If my nephew is biologically my husband's, it's not a huge deal to me. I am more concerned about my husband's well-being, knowing that his nephew could be a product of his SAA and having to remind himself of that every time he sees him. I'm worried about how my nephew is dealing with all of this and when I'll see him again. How would he feel in a few years if he found out his uncle is his dad? I just honestly hope she changes her mind and drops this all for the sake of her kid. TLDR. Nephew is possibly the product of my husband being SA. An ex-sister-in-law wants paternity tests on both possible fathers either way. Dad wants to be dad. And my husband wants to remain uncle. Edit. Yes, we have an attorney. Yes, attackers can still get custody and go for child support in my state. Yes, I know Shelly stinks. Shelly and Mike were never married. And thanks for the insensitive comments. I should not have to explain that it is completely possible for men to be SAED too. No, John would have never, in a million years, hooked up willingly with Shelly. Shelly verbally admitted to the SA. Yes, we'll all be getting therapy. Unfortunately, it's just a SHTTY situation we have to deal with. My heart just goes out to my nephew. And I hope whatever happens, he's okay. He's the biggest victim. Update. This is not the update I hoped I'd be writing, but things really took a turn. I hope this sub allows updates. Otherwise, I can post somewhere else for those interested. Before I begin, I'd like to add that very soon after Mike's breakup with Shelly and separation from his son, he met a woman. We all thought it was too soon, because he moved in with her within a couple of weeks. It was a very fast-paced, whirlwind relationship in which she had a son around 10 years old. This will all come into play later. Mike was obviously infatuated with her at first, but we urged him to pump the brakes. He was so emotionally volatile from the breakup and not seeing his son. She was going through some major life changes too, which I won't get into. But their relationship seemed to really build on them trying to take care of each other. We tried to be happy for him. We have not met her, but we know she sent Shelly some very nasty. You are a horrible mother texts. Anyway, one afternoon, Mike texted John. He asked about John's custody schedule with his son because he was thinking about what kind of arrangement he wanted with my nephew. Mike told John that he wanted the exact opposite week-to-week -week schedule that John had, so that my nephew would be there on the same weeks she had her kids. John told him that if he took that schedule, our sons would never see each other. Mike said that he needed to have his son in those weeks because his son needed to grow up with her kid, and also we need breaks from the kids. This comment really rubbed me the wrong way. He was a full-time dad before, and suddenly he needs a break from the child he hasn't seen in weeks. He said it was going to be hard to raise two children, and that they needed the alternate weeks alone. What? John made a comment that it was messed up that he hasn't seen his kid in so long, and he's already so worried about having a break. Plus, he barely knows this new woman, and he's already raising her child. Mike came back and told John, It is all your fault that this is happening. John and Mike went out of contact after that comment. I could not believe he just blamed it on John. So from then on, we received updates from Mill instead. We are on a waiting list, so we haven't gotten into therapy yet. Generally, we were in a depressive funk and just had this worry looming over us every single day. One night, Mill calls and tells us that Mike made up his mind and cannot raise his son if he isn't his. He wants John to take a paternity test with him immediately and was trying to find out our address we recently moved. I was speechless. After the years of him and Shelly trying to get John to be a sperm donor, him wanting a family, raising his son as his, and he wanting to give it all up if he's not biologically his son. I've been raising John's son as my own, and if we split and I was given the opportunity for custody, I would take it in a heartbeat. I just couldn't fathom abandoning a child I raised, even if they were not biologically my own. John and I cried for a few days for just so many reasons. John confided in me and said he didn't know if he could actually take in his nephew and raise him if he was his. He didn't know if he could love and look at him as a son after what happened with Shelly. I wish we were in therapy already, but I told him I loved him and completely understood him. I don't know if it would be fair to raise him and not be able to look at him and love him the same as his other child when he'd be seeing his attacker every single day. I could tell this whole situation really broke him. Mill came back and said that Mike made this decision because Shelly told him that John and she had a six-month-long affair. She fabricated some text messages as proof. John said he did not and would never do that to his brother, and he would never see Shelly that way. Mill relayed that to Mike, but it didn't make much difference. If his son was not biologically his, 
He was going full swing into the courts to do everything he could to get himself out of the situation. Shelley sent John a voluntary paternity notice in the mail, and I could have thrown up when I saw it. We were in legal mode, and our lawyer advised us not to go through with it. It came right from the child support office. We assumed Mike was now actually cooperating with Shelley, and they were now both out to get John, convinced they could just push the responsibility onto him so Mike could get out of being a parent, and Shelley would have a hefty child support check coming in probably. Mike's new girlfriend started posting things on Facebook about how great Mike was with her son, how they were best buddies, and all that. Something clicked in my head with one of the posts. I honestly think she was trying to get Mike to push away his son so her son could have him all to himself. I think Mike was playing right into it, and would have happily rejected his son for this, more mature, kid he didn't have to put the work in for. This is not the Mike I knew, but John said he is acting exactly like their own absent father. Mike wanted his son to not be his. John had been in no contact with Mike since those previous texts and would not be going in with Mike to take the paternity test. For brothers, unless you pay for an extensive test, they usually want both to come in because they can be so genetically similar. So I received emails from Mike asking me if John had gone in for a test yet, saying he needed to know and needed to know very soon. Mike's girlfriend texted John as well, saying the same thing. They needed to know very soon. Mike contacted me and kept bringing up the affair like it was supposed to make me angry with John. But I never responded. His girlfriend texted John and told him he must be waiting to get ordered by the court. John started questioning himself. He was drinking heavily at the time he was SA at, so he wondered if he just didn't remember having an affair. I told him even if he did, the S a still happened regardless, and being in a relationship with someone does not assume consent, especially if he was blackout drunk and she was stone cold sober. After days of worrying and wondering if Mike got his results back, we got a call from Mill. Mike is the biological father. John and I cried with relief. Mill said that the extensive test came back 99.9% .9 positive and that Mike was the father. She said Mike said, screw it, I guess I'll go for custody. I would have thought he'd be happy, but it just doesn't sound like it. He completely deleted his son from his social media during this weird limbo time of not knowing. Mill said he didn't make attempts to contact Shelly to see his son. Shelly's been telling her son that Mike abandoned him and doesn't love him anymore. I wonder how Mike's new girlfriend feels about him actually being the father. Mill said Shelly called the child support office and told them not to pursue John anymore, which I'm shocked she did. She also told Mike she had completely made up the affair because she was still upset about the breakup. Shelly hasn't brought her son over to my stepson's mom's at all since the first couple of times. I'm hoping my stepson's mom realizes her intentions and shuts that down, especially since they are only cousins now, not brothers. I was impatient to post this update, so we have not yet heard back from our lawyer regarding pressing any ESSA charges. I know we might get some backlash from this, but we're honestly on the fence about it. John has been through so much. After just living in fear for the past couple of months and not feeling safe in our own home, I know he just wants to be done with it. We might wait to make a decision after talking to a counselor and our lawyer. In the end, we need to do what's best for our family. After all of this, we will probably not see our nephew for a very long time, if not ever again. It breaks my heart, and I hope he's okay. Part of me still wants John to press charges, but I understand if he wants to be done with that chapter of his life and move on. I hope my stepson will be able to understand why he won't be seeing his cousin. They didn't see each other much anyway. John does not see himself ever being able to let Mike back into our lives again, and I don't blame him. I am thankful Mill has been supportive while also trying to remain impartial to both sons. We have had a really good support system between John's other brother and my family. John's other brother will also be out of contact with Mike. I may update in a year or so after the court cases have settled. I was going to wait to post this in fear it might be recognized, but honestly, I don't care anymore. TLDR. Mike did a 180 and decided he could not raise his child if he's not biologically his. He blamed it all on John. Shelly fabricated an affair. Shelly, and he teamed up against John. Mike's girlfriend was also likely pushing him to reject his child. Mike turned out to be the father. John and Mike are now out of contact. Mike said, I guess, he'll go for custody. Mike is not the man I thought I knew. I have documents for proof. If a moderator needs to reach out and confirm this isn't made up. Thank you for watching the video. If you are interested in listening to these kinds of stories, we've got more in store for you. Simply subscribe to our channel, hit the like button, and share it with your friends.